It's 2020. The world has been on fire and we have been on the verge of a new global war. What else could go wrong? Oh yeah, I forgot about this guy. Hi, I'm Peter, and I'm an indie game developer from Italy. As you may or may not know, in the last few weeks Italy has been heavily hit by the coronavirus and we are currently ranking number 3 in the world for the most number of cases. When it all began, around the middle of February, the situation was absurd. I live in Milan, which is one of the major cities around the epicenter of the epidemic, and things were crazy and surreal. Like People were raiding pharmacies and supermarkets, leaving nothing on the shelves, and the city overall became deserted, like no one around the main streets and squares and the city center, which is usually overcrowded all year long. In this situation, a trash bag like me thought it would be a great idea to make a game about it, just to face our slowly approaching demise with a smile on our face and the video game addiction. Enough wasting your time, let's get right into it. So, the game was developed in a week, but I really only worked on it 5 days. I wanted such deadline because it needed to be released before the virus hype had vanished. It was my first time working with a deadline and that messed up my usual development process. But at the end, I managed to get a finished game I'm fairly happy with. Everything started with a frustrating task of coming up with an idea. At first, I was gonna make a little top-down shooter where the player would have to travel to different locations in the city via the subway and clear them of the virus to then proceed to the next one. Sounds good, right? Yeah. That's when I realized making different levels was way overscoped and I decided to only do one. And since I already wasted the entire morning prototyping the top-down game, I decided it would make a good first-person shooter. Yeah. I quickly got down to model a simple gun and code a simpler FPS controller. After that, since I felt visually inspired, I modeled the weapon the player would use to get rid of the virus. I present to you the Amokine Sanitizer Blaster. Yeah, that's the most clever joke I've ever come up with and I'm really proud of that. I then modeled the virus and you can see the level of skill that was required to come up with such a visually stunning result and realized I would not have the time of modeling the whole level by myself. I chose to set the game in the city center in front of the cathedral and even though it was only one level, there were simply too many buildings. I decided to call my friend Matteo and ask him to give me a hand with modeling the scene. Hello? Hey Matt, I'm making a game about the coronavirus. The idea is that you run around in front of the cathedral and shoot the virus with a Namakan gun. Will you help me model the buildings around the map? Yo, it makes no sense. I mean... That was easy. When I was sitting there staring at the black screen on my phone after ending the call, I thought that since I had already brought Matteo in, I could ask someone for a little help with the music. I called my friend Eugenio, who is a great guitarist and after a few seconds of perplexity, he agreed to help too. He would meet up with my brother and record some guitar and bass and drums and then send me the finished tracks. Now, I only had to tell my brother about this. Bella Jack, sto facendo, come ti avevo detto, un gioco sul corona, per chi non ho un cazzo di meglio da fare. E ho già sentito le Euge e siccome so che vi vedete nei prossimi giorni, potreste fare una colonna sonora anche semplice, che tanto siete bravi. Grazie. <ride> Ciao. A few moments later. Basta, Pie, mi hai rotto il cazzo, è la ventesima volta che me lo chiedi, non ho assolutamente intenzione di darti una mano con questo gioco o con nessun altro gioco che hai in mente di fare. Basta. Ah, I love my brother. Now that I had an actual team of friends working on the game along with me, I went on with my own work. I wrote a short intro scene to give the game some sort of storyline and try to make it feel dramatic using Unity's press processing image effects. I also wrote a simple script to have the text display over time as it is being typed on the spot. After that, I added the music and the result was something like this.
I also made a scene to display the controls of the player because I was too lazy to configure some control settings in the main menu and I feel like my Attack on Titan binge watching had a slight effect on the graphics. Now that I had the less relevant pieces of the game put together and that Matteo had sent me the building models, I felt like it was time to get down to work and actually assemble the game. Building up the map was easy. I just opened Google Maps and looked for the Cathedral Square, took a screenshot and positioned the buildings following it. The game was originally supposed to be mobile, so we left out some details like the subway station stairs and the one so controversial palm trees. I used some deep red cubes and their colliders coordinates to mark out the spawning areas for the virus. Originally, I had only planned to have the virus spawn in the open, but I later changed game design and chose to have people appear at the start of every wave and spawn enemies until the player brings them a mask. I decided I would only need a really basic person model and an even more basic skeleton and went on to animate them in Unity just moving around the bone pivot points. Then. I spent a good 20 minutes staring at them, mushing to the soundtrack. Eventually, the 3rd of March arrived, and for some reason, I felt the need to record the next part in the bathroom. Yo, it's finally the last day of development, and there are three things left that I have to do. So, one, I have to voice act and put some sound in the game. Two, I have to finish the title screen. And three, I have to publish the game and I really don't want to forget that, so I wrote it on my heart. I felt oh. really stupid making noises in the headphone mic, so I actually woke up earlier to record the sound for the people, the virus and the player getting hurt to avoid my family walking in on me shouting in front of the computer. Oh. After recording everything, I mixed it in Audacity Grazie. and put it in the game, which was quite easy. The main menu is the first screen the player sees when launching the game. I wanted to have some nice image effects, but I also wanted it to be as readable as possible. To do this, I actually used two UI canvases, one in overlay mode for the text and the UI elements, and one as a background for the camera, which is subject to post-processing effects. I had to squeeze in a credits page for thanking my friends and my brother, and some display of the player high scores. Eventually, I also put a checkbox to skip the 50 second long intro if you had already seen it. It was over. It's not perfect, I know, but it is fun. At least for the first couple of times you play it. <laughs> on the evening of the 3rd of March, I created a page for the game on itch.io and published it. I was actually surprised by how easy and user-friendly is publishing a game on this platform. If I had to call out some things that didn't really go smoothly, I say that especially when working with a deadline, it's crucial to organize the project to perfection even before setting off with the making of it. More than one time during the five days of work, I felt like throwing it all away just because the directories were messy and the code was poorly arranged. Changing my mindset and working on a, in a more focused day on the last few days was a game changer. I would even dare say in that I made more the last day than the previous ones just because I changed my attitude and that's a good takeaway lesson for me and I hope it is for you as well. So this was the process of making my first 3D first person shooter game in a week. I will leave the link to the download on itch.io in the description and I will make sure to do an update for some bug fixing and the support of the English language. Thank you for watching, thank you for sticking along to this point and in hope of seeing you again. Bye.